Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. If you could sign the guest and the membership cards in the pews and then place them in the ends of the pews, we would greatly appreciate that. And also a reminder uh, to look in your service folder or in your hymnal uh, when singing and kind of looking at those melody notes as we try to uh, learn some of those new melodies, some of those new hymns that we're going through with our new hymnal. We have some special prayers this morning. We continue to pray for Warren Cramp as he continues in hospice. We give a prayer of thanksgiving on behalf of Daniel Dew as he has uh, done well. He's recovered pretty much, so we thank uh, the Lord for that. We continue to pray for Lyle Horgan that he recovers from his hospital stay. We pray for the family of Horst Hanch and also Bruno, Bruno Nickel, that is uh, Helga Olke's brother, um, their family, and also the Krejci family, as they all mourn the loss of uh, Horst and Bruno and continue to mourn the loss of Eleanor as they have been called home to glory. We also pray for the family of Richard Cody. Uh, Mr. Cody is who we call to be our principal here at St. Paul's. And in also prayers for calls, we pray for Mr. Craig Sharon. He's been called to be the president of ML. So we'll keep him and his family in our prayers. We also pray for uh, one of our members, Adeline Crone, as it is her, it's going to be her 101st birthday on Friday. So we thank the Lord for uh, the many years of grace that he has granted to Adeline. And finally, we pray for the, uh, uh, the churches and Christians in Ukraine uh, as that war continues to move on. We pray that the Lord's word continues to be proclaimed even in the midst of a difficult situation like that. And our 
before we uh, take a look at what our focus is going to be, when we get to the communion portion of the service, when we go into those canticles, those songs, there's going to be one note played and then we're going to, everyone just joins in singing right away. So it's going to sound something like this. Uh, Donna's going to play it right now. So we're doing that one note, and then that's kind of our introduction, and then we go, everyone starts singing right away. So just to make you aware of that. And then our focus for this morning is that human rejection is crushed by divine exaltation. Uh, And we especially see that in the gospel lesson this morning as Jesus tells the parable of uh, wicked tenants. And so uh, we see uh, in that lesson specifically and in some of our hymns that when we are rejected by humans or the world, uh, that ultimately our Lord delivers us and exalts us by his power. And so uh, we'll be meditating on that this morning. And before we begin with our opening hymn, turn to those that you'll be worshiping with this morning and say hello to them. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with all my heart in what I have done and left undone. I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved others as you command. For this I deserve your punishment, now and forever. I am sorry for my sins. I repent of them. I beg for your mercy. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me.
You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 43. This will serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. This is what the Lord says, who makes a road through the sea and a path through mighty waters, who brings out the chariot and the horses, the army and the strong warrior. They will all lie down together. They will not get up. They are extinguished. Like a wick, they go out. Do not remember the former things. Do not keep thinking about ancient things. Watch, I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring up. Don't you know about it? Indeed, I will make a road in the wilderness. In the wasteland, I will make rivers. The wild animals, the jackals and ostriches will honor me because I am providing water in the wilderness, rivers in a parched wasteland, water for my chosen people to drink. This people that I formed for myself will declare my praise. The word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 73. The second reading for this morning comes from Philippians chapter 3. The divine exaltation which Paul receives from being connected to Christ, he explains, outweigh by far anything that this world can offer. If anyone else thinks that he has grounds for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, in regard to zeal, persecuting the church, in regard to the righteousness that is in the law, blameless. But whatever things were a profit for me, 
These things I have come to consider as a loss because of Christ. But even more than that, I consider everything to be a loss because of what, it is, because of what is worth far more, knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have lost all things and consider them rubbish so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own which comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God by faith. I do this so that I may, so that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, in the hope that in some way I might arrive at the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus also took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it yet, but there is one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and straining toward the things that are ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please stand out of respect for the gospel. The gospel lesson for today comes from Luke chapter 20. In Jesus' parable that he tells, there is much rejection, but the Lord crushes those who reject him and exalts his people, those who cling to his promises. He began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to some tenant farmers, and went away on a journey for a long time. When it was the right time, He sent a servant to the tenants to collect his share of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenant farmers beat the servant and sent him away empty-handed. The man went ahead and sent yet another servant, but they also beat him, treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. He then sent yet a third. They also wounded him and threw him out. The owner of the vineyard said, What should I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenant farmers saw him, they talked it over with one another. They said, this is the heir. Let's kill him so that the inheritance will be ours. They threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. So what will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenant farmers and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, may it never be. But he looked at them and said, Then what about this this that is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush the one on whom it falls. That very hour, the chief priests and the experts in the law began looking for a way to lay hands on him, because they knew he had spoken this parable against them, but they were afraid of the people. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, Your Works Not Mine, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace belong to you, sisters and brothers in Christ. If you've uh, ever been hiking, or even if you haven't done a whole lot of hiking in your life, you know uh, the importance of paths. Whether you're uh, hiking uh, the mountains out west in Montana or Colorado, or whether you're hiking in the desert, or whether you're just here at Grand Mere in Stevensville, Paths are important. If it's getting dark out, you don't want to stray too far from the path. Or if you're in the thick of the mountains, you don't want to stray from the path because you might not find your way back to it. And on the other hand, if you are lost and then you stumble upon a path, there's a sense of relief because you know that that path will lead you somewhere. And in our Old Testament reading this morning, your Lord speaks about himself as one who who makes paths. He says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through mighty waters. This incident that the Lord is talking about, that Isaiah talks about, is referencing back to the Exodus. Israel escaping from Egypt, as they were pinned between the Red Sea and a vengeful Egyptian army, Israel panicked and they were afraid and they said, Moses, why'd you lead us out here? You should have just left us in Egypt. Because they were trapped. There was no path for them. There was no way out. Except the Lord created a path and it was through water that he made a path for Israel to Escape, And so they went through the Red Sea on dry land, passed through the other side. The Lord brought in the chariots and the riders and all the Egyptians into the Red Sea and then snuffed them out like a wick. They were extinguished. The battle was won. Israel was delivered. And that event was a huge part of Israel's history. And they passed the knowledge of the Exodus on from generation to generation. They taught their children so that they would remember who their God was and that their God loved them. But from what Isaiah said, it's also an incident that perhaps Israel was dwelling on a little bit too much. That their hearts were set in the past. Because the Lord says, don't remember the former things. Do not keep thinking about ancient things. What are the former things? Well, from the context, it's the exodus that the Lord talks about. Which is kind of odd, right? Why would the Lord uh, define himself according to this great event, say that he is the one who makes paths through water, and then tell Israel, forget about that? Well, I don't think God is saying, totally forget about the Exodus, stop teaching it to your children, never think about it again. But it seems that Israel was perhaps kind of living in the past. That they were looking back at that Exodus and really wanted some kind of deliverance that was exactly the same. But the Lord says, don't. Remember that. Don't dwell on the ancient things. Don't meditate on those things in the past. And so he says, forget it. Because if they're living in the past too much, that could limit their view of what God could do for them currently and in the future. And so he says, forget the former things. Why? Because he says this. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. I am making a way in the wilderness. What does that mean? I am making a way in the wilderness. So we have the Lord who made a way, a path through the water. But now a new thing is that he's going to make a way through the wilderness. Well, Israel was going to need another deliverance. Not quite yet, but they were going to need to be delivered from Babylon. The Babylonian Empire would swallow up Israel and would deport many Jews to the land of Babylon for 70 years. And so they would need deliverance 
from the land of Babylon. And so the Lord would make a path through the wilderness from Babylon, through that dry desert area, back to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord was going to do. The Lord promises deliverance even before any judgment has happened. And so he's saying don't meditate on the past because you might be blinded to the deliverance, the blessings that are coming in the future. And so the deliverance from Babylon back to Jerusalem would not be exactly the same as the deliverance from Egypt. The exodus was a dry path through water. This would now be a dry path through a desert, but the Lord is going to provide water. So they're not exactly the same. They're different. The present blessings, the future blessings and deliverance that the Lord would bring were going to be different blessings than, the, than Israel had experienced in the past. And so they were not to set their hearts on the past. They were not to be living and dwelling in the past and the past blessings that the Lord had given to them. Not that they were to forget those things, but just that that is not where their hearts were dwelling. But it's hard not to dwell on the past, isn't it? Because the past is what we know. The future is unknown. And so it can happen with you and me that perhaps sometimes we we dwell on the past too much. Maybe you think about the, the different paths that the Lord has led you on in your life. And maybe you look back and you think that some of those paths are more enjoyable than the paths that you are currently on now. Maybe throughout your life you were walking on the path of life with a loved one. Maybe it was a spouse, maybe it was a different family member, someone who you loved, whom you supported, and they they supported you. But now, maybe that person has died and passed away, and so you are on a new path, a different path that doesn't really look that great, that looks kind of bleak. Or maybe you look back on the path of your youth and you think back to times when you didn't have to really worry about going to the doctor, didn't have to worry about disease and illnesses, and now maybe you're sick or maybe you are your body is getting stiff, maybe it feels like it's breaking down, and you think about those blessings that the Lord had given you on that past path, and you wish that you could go back. Your heart is kind of living back there and dwelling on that. Or maybe the path you are on right now is hectic and crazy, and you are driving kids all over the place, or maybe you're taking care of family members, maybe work is really busy, and you just think back to the past paths that the Lord had blessed you with, and maybe those paths were a little bit easier, a little bit slower, easier to handle, and you look with fondness on those things. It's not healthy to dwell and to meditate on those past blessings too much, to live in the past. And it's not saying that you have to forget about those things. It's good to remember those things. It's good to thank the Lord for those things. But we don't dwell in the past and meditate on the past. We look forward to the path that the Lord has laid out before us now and the future path and the blessings that the Lord will bring to you on whatever path you are on in life now. Maybe your loved one passed away and you don't have them to support you anymore. But there are still blessings on that path that you are on now. The blessing of seeing things from a a different perspective. The blessing of leaning on others 
the blessings of others leaning on you, and you sharing the comfort of Christ with those who maybe are losing a loved one. Those are good blessings from the Lord. They're just different. Or maybe your health is you're struggling with your health right now. Maybe your body feels like it's slowing down, breaking down. And you think about the past when you were you were healthier and young and you look with fondness on that. But there are many blessings the Lord gives you now. You maybe don't have the same health you did when you were younger. Maybe you can't do the same things you used to do, but you have wisdom. You have the experience of living life with God's grace. And so you can share those experiences, you can share that wisdom with others as you glorify God. Or if your life is hectic and crazy right now and you wish it would just slow down, you have blessings. Perhaps you have blessings of children that lead you all over the place. Perhaps you have blessings of taking care of other family members. And in those areas that you live, you are an example of Christ to your children, to other people, to show them how you live as a Christian when things are crazy and busy and how you prioritize your Lord in your life. Those are all blessings on the new paths that you are living. And there are always blessings, whatever path the Lord is leading you on. They may be different than the paths that you have walked in the path, that the blessings that the Lord has given you in the past, but they are blessings nonetheless, great blessings. And so wherever your current path in life takes you, you are blessed. And as you go through the path of life, the path that you follow is Jesus. As Jesus says, I am the way. He's the path. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And those old deliverances, those old paths, the the path through the water for Israel in the Exodus, the path from Babylon back to Judea, those were paths which really pointed forward to Christ, the ultimate path who leads you and I on the path of the forgiveness of sins with the end result being the glories of heaven. And so Jesus is the path that you and I follow in this life. A life that is full of wastelands and wildernesses a life that can be difficult at times. But in those difficult paths, the Lord gives you living water to sustain you, to keep you going forward and relying on His Word. And He will lead you to the promised land, to those green and verdant pastures of heaven, to those still and refreshing waters. That's the path that you are on dear Christians. And one of the blessings that you have as Christians being on Christ's path is to proclaim blessings to others, to proclaim the praise of the Lord. And you do that, you you want to do that because you are His people, His chosen people, those whom He formed for Himself The Lord says, I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. That is one of the blessings that you and I have in this life, is to proclaim the good news to others, to friends, family, to strangers. And that also is one of the blessings which we have as a congregation at St. Paul's. St. Paul's has a a rich history. It's been on many paths in the past over uh, at about 125 years, right? We're preparing for that 125th anniversary. 
And the Lord has blessed St. Paul's in many ways, and he continues to bless St. Paul's. However, just like Israel was not to meditate on the past and set their hearts on the past, neither do earthly churches, neither do we here at St. Paul's, as it might hinder what God can do for the future. And the goal is always to proclaim his praises in truth and love and purity. And so we continue to look forward on whatever path it is that the Lord has set before us. And maybe that means adjustments need to be made in certain areas. Maybe certain traditions need to be adjusted, which I know is hard with German Lutherans, right? But the path that the Lord lays out before us is different than it was in the past. But there are still many blessings. Maybe when we look at ministry of church and school things, we need to be adjusted, but we continually move forward to proclaim his praises. And we don't throw out the past. We don't forget about the past. We learn from it. We praise God for it. But our hearts don't dwell in the past. We look forward to the path that the Lord has laid out before us. And so you and I look ahead sisters and brothers, with the overall ministry of St. Paul's, but in your individual lives, too. And you see the blessings that the Lord has given you, and the blessings that he's given you on your current and future paths. And you know that there will always be blessings on whatever path you are in in life, because it's his path. He's the one guiding you. You may go through some dark valleys, through the valley of the shadow of death, but you go through that valley. And ultimately, he will lead you to those verdant and lush pastures, to those still and refreshing waters. Even though parts of the path may be dusty and difficult, he is there to provide you with living water to get you through those difficulties. And he will bring you on that path of deliverance to a bright green country where you dwell with the Lord. And the path that you are on is a path which proclaims the gospel to all and is reminded of the gospel in your own life every day. And so we look forward, sisters and brothers, to the path that the Lord has laid out before us and the blessings on those paths. Amen. Please stand as we join together in confessing our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Today he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, and proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer of the church. Lord.
Lord of hope, we praise you for allowing Daniel to recover from his health issues. Continue to grant him strength in his body and lead him and Jean to rest in your guiding hand. We ask that you continue to watch over and support Warren as he remains in hospice care. Grant him strength and patience in this difficult time and lead him to always rest on the comfort of your word. We ask that you continue to grant Lyle quick recovery from his ailments and grant him comfort and hope through your word that all things are under your control. Lord, we continue to uh, ask that you comfort the Krejci family as they mourn Eleanor's death. And we pray that you bring comfort to Horst's family and Bruno's family as they also mourn Horst's and Bruno's deaths. Lead them to find comfort and hope in the knowledge of the resurrection from the dead and that Eleanor, Bruno, and Horst are in glory right now due to the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Guide them through the path of grief and lead them to find comfort in your word. Lord, continue to be with Mr. Cody as he continues to deliberate the call to serve at St. Paul's as principal. We also ask that you guide Mr. Sharon as he de deliberates his call to be president of ML. Guide their thought process and grant their families patience during this process. Whatever their decisions may be, bless the ministries of all places. Lord, we praise you for the 101 years of life which our sister Adeline has been blessed Continue to watch over her and grant her peace the rest of her days. Comfort her in body and remind her of your eternal truths and the forgiveness of sins earned for her in Christ her Savior. Lord, as war continues to ravage Ukraine, be with all Christians there. Give them strength and courage to continue proclaiming your gospel message. Work faith in people's hearts through your word that many may be saved for your kingdom. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We now have an opportunity as a family of believers to show our, uh, to worship our Lord with our offerings. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil, who overcame us by a tree, would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
We give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O Lord, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in he- who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, hymn 570, verses 1 to 3 and verse 5. It was a pleasure to worship our Lord with you this morning. Uh, just a few announcements. Reminder of, we still have Lenten services this week, 4.30 and 6.30. Uh, last chance to sign up for growth groups on the, the circular table in the lobby. Um, give it a try. Yeah, it's always a good time. And then also the Easter flower ordering sheet is still uh, available, um, and there's envelopes for those, uh, for those flower ordering sheets. Uh, then a note on... Horst Hanch's funeral. That will be tomorrow at Starks and Menchinger uh, on Niles there. Uh, the visitation is from 2 to 3, and the funeral is at 3. Um, so if you'd like to, uh, to come and hear the, the proclamation of the word there and the, the glory of knowing uh, where Horst is and that comfort, um, you're all invited. That is it. God's blessings on the rest of your day and your week.